Hey, what's going on guys? Kalamaza here, and this evening I want to talk to you all a little bit about Affliction Warlock talent builds heading into patch 10.0.7, which is hitting in about six or five days now, depending on when you're watching this video. Now, Affliction Sims have sort of been updated over the past 24, 48, 72-ish hours in Sims, uh, thanks to a lot of awesome and smart people in the Lock Discord. I'm not smart enough to write APLs for them. I can change little things here and there, but they take the majority of the credit pretty much all the credit for this because uh they're awesome and i'm not but either way um <laughs> i have sims the different builds and things that are updated for you guys um in case you're curious now off the bat sorry my allergies are acting up today um destruction builds really aren't changing a whole lot heading into 10.0.7 the only thing that's really getting buffed is incinerate and immolate and that's not really changing any talent combinations and demonology is however demonology sims aren't working right now i don't know if they're going to work um we know we have a good idea what builds are looking best anyways. I'll have guides coming out on AF, Demo, and Destro in a few days for 0.7 regardless, and we'll cover them more there. But Affliction's getting probably the biggest changes and uh, biggest in damage increases and probably biggest in just, you know, talent tree combinations. So, tonight's video, we're talking about all of that. As always, we course add-ons profiles, links down below uh, to my Twitch and Discord, but they're all for free for you guys. I'll have links to the Sims down below as well. And uh, yeah, as always, again, a huge shout out to my patrons. Before we get too far in the video um guys thank you for supporting patreon appreciate it a million times thank you thank you thank you and uh yeah let's just jump right into it Alrighty, and once again i apologize for my allergies being a bit uh odd it's florida and it's getting close to summer and i'm sorry but uh, anyway so getting into this i'm using the exact same class tree for every single sim it's not changing we're playing two points in sakrathar two points in sargerai two 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 and two we're playing grim feast even though we're not playing id and basically all these sims the class tree does not change at all. You won't see any more past pretty much this part of the video. It is all the same. And uh, yeah. So, all right. So getting into it. Now, there have been questions over the past probably few weeks or so. Why are you playing Pandemic Invocation and Soul Swap over two points in ID? Now, you can sort of get ID and Soul MPI here as well if you want by pulling you know, a point from here and putting it you know, to one. But people have been asking, why aren't you playing ID? And the main reason is because ID just sort of sucks. It's not very good damage wise. If you're in a progression based setting and need that passive healing or that, that healing drain life every once in a while, it can be good. Don't get me wrong. I use it a lot on Diurna, Razgath, a handful of fights replayed at this tier. But as far as raw damage outputs concerned, it is not really where you want to be. And to show that, I've run Sims looking at both of these combinations here. So uh, off the bat, this is so there's a lot of abbreviations here. Advanced PTR Sims don't show talent trees. I'm going to do my best here to try and show what I'm playing in game. Uh, for what it's worth, we weren't playing this build. We were playing this build right here, which is this has been the pretty much the de facto go to single target build I've played on PTR. So this is Pandemic Invocation, Soul Swap, PI, Soul Swap. It's not Piss. And uh, <laughs> HS is Haunted Soul, meaning this whole row is filled out. So currently sitting at about 103,485 DPS Sim. I took the liberty of running a sim here, uh, playing two ID, no PI, uh, no piss, basically, no soul swap and haunted soul, basically taking these two points, one from here, one from here, and putting it into ID. And you can play with it however you want. You can still put a point in PI, pulling a point from here. I play with different combinations. None of them are worthwhile. The big thing here, and the reason we're playing soul swap in PI, like I said, PI basically sims higher than two points on ID. Soul Swap has some relevancy in some settings, but the main reason is we want Withering Bolt. And you're either playing ID or Soul Flame or Soul Swap to get Withering Bolt. Now, I will say for all these sims, obviously, if ID is applicable in certain settings to a similar extent, if Soul Flame is applicable, play that. It's more than fine. This is a general template to go off of, right? So the, the build that I play for the majority of PTR has indeed been this. The Pandemic Invocation, Soul Swap, Haunt the Soul build in single target, right? Now, if you're playing an AOE setting where you want seed and so I just pulled two points from Dark Virtuosity and went seed. So pretty simple, not too complicated, um, but moving on from there. So we have a handful of Sims here to look at different combinations. And this is where it begins to get a bit interesting. So I said to myself, number one, what happens if we play Soul Rot? Because Soul Rot, uh, number one, we have this coming in, which busts Rapture damage a bit more. Uh, we have Dark Lair getting more benefit from every dot active on your current target it's 25 percent, not 10 percent. so what if we played soul rot right and my question was what do you pull in this final row to get soul rot because you basically want haunted soul haunt you want this whole row for sure and dark layers buffed you pretty much want dark layer right so i said let's pull crescendo and see what soul rot gives now this does mean that you'll have 
gonna have to spend more raw shards to maintain dread touch it is eight seconds now and not six but it's still a bit more taxing on your shards and things like that and the same output that i got was 102,698 lower than the pi uh sack so or pi soul swap haunted soul sim right so this builds close ish not the best not the worst but crescendo it does indeed appear to be basically a de facto go-to you want this in pretty much every build so moving on from there the next build that i wanted to sim was a tormented crescendo malevolent visionary sim so basically what we did is we ended up pulling these two points and going like this i think i threw my last point up here in uh sacrilegious dark strike just to see where damage would be playing malevolent visionary right so we're playing crescendo playing visionary playing dark glare and all that and we got a 98,220 sim not the most impressive about a uh, what 4.5k dps loss compared to uh the soul rot build before but then i said okay let's see what we get here playing crescendo playing soul rot and then putting this point from sacrilash which shouldn't be there in the first place into soul rot what does this give me and the output was 103,373 which is very very close to the pandemic invocation soul swap haunt the soul build we were playing it is pretty much within 100 ish dps 150 and you also have access to dark layer being bigger juicier on a two minute cooldown some more pi value you also have soul rot which brings more burst in those minute long rapture windows with vile taint and soul rot and all that more damage amp to dark layer it makes sense it further empowers raptures having soul rot it further empowers your dots from dread touch and all that and it also empowers malevolent visionary more because dark layer has another dot up which means a 30 percent additional damage increase thanks to its baseline increase and then malevolent visionary so now, personally to me a build playing malevolent visionary and soul rot sounds a lot more exciting than a build playing haunted soul mainly because of how just sort of boring seize mentality is it's sort of it's like a toll you gotta pay to get the haunted soul right but then i thought to myself and it was brought up by somebody in guild as well what if you played soul leaders gluttony right so we're sitting at 103,373 playing crescendo soul rot and this this current sim here is the visionary build but if you shift the double soul leaders gluttony I'm sitting at a 102,880 DPS. I'm only losing about 500 ish DPS. Now, the interesting thing with this sim playing double soul eaters gluttony is that if you're playing vile taint, which does appear to be your best option in single target for now, that might change with 10.1 tier sets, but that's a few, I assume, months away. Your vile taint's half a minute long, cooldown wise, obviously. With soul eaters gluttony though your soul rot ends up being around 30 to 35 ish depending on ua uptime depending on a few things here and there you can basically sink your soul rot for the most part with every single vile tank giving you more raw value in that rapture window because it gets more frequent raw value in that rapture window because every single window will have soul rot and vile tank active versus every other one having you know soul rot and vile tank right now you do lose visionary here but the thing is if there's a fight where you want this profile with larger just AOE burst by a soul rot and also having vile taint around every half a minute, this very well could be the build you want to play. This offers the most consistent burst profiles being half a minute long comparatively to this build here playing visionary, having solid burst every minute with soul rot vile taint and you know, big burst with dark lair visionary soul rot vile taint every two minutes and smaller burst you know every half a minute by taint. So it really depends what you want. But the cool thing is that and there's a comparison sim at the end here also looking at all the builds fyi but the cool thing here is that pretty much all these builds are within a thousand or two thousand dps of each other and they're very very customizable they're, the toolkit can change to fit so many different scenarios right so moving on from soldiers got in the build here the next sim we ran was some grim reach stuff because we're curious all right if dark is doing a lot of damage where is grim reach sitting so we ended up running a build grim reach no tormented crescendo so we pulled this here and went like this we, we know we want soul rot for dark layer empowerments grim reach empowerments all that stuff we pulled crescendo and we're sitting at about 101,460 dps because grim reach does indeed do extra damage in single target it does more damage it's basically a separate damage event on top of i beam in single target and honestly like for what is what constitutes sort of an aoe build you're sitting at 101,000 460 dps the highest single target build we have is 103,485. so once again there are so many builds that are really customizable if you want a bit more of a single target emphasis you're probably playing you know crescendo at some point but i wouldn't want to pull soul rot here like i said though interestingly enough this is still a very high single target sim 
for any class in the game. And you have a large AoE cooldown in Grim Reach with Dark Lair. You have Vital Titan for AoE Agony application. You have Soul Rot every minute. The build's looking pretty good. We ended up moving a bit here, uh, pulling Soul Rot. So like this build does pull Soul Rot and you do gain Crescendo back. Soul Rot is more valuable in AoE, obviously like three, four, five target settings, all that stuff. But if you're looking at more of a, a bit more of a single target damage profile, you can indeed go back to playing Crescendo like this and play Grim Reach. And like I said, this build's not the highest, but this build's literally a thousand DPS behind our highest main build, roughly. Highest main build being 103485, this build being 102374. It's within basically a thousand DPS, the builds playing Haunted Soul sees vitality. And this gives you a much a similar but different damage profile. And if you're on a fight that has a lot of adds, Grim Reach can crank whether you're playing Soul Rod or not. With huge AoE from Dark Lair, it's a lot of fun. So uh, to compile it all, the one big comparison sim in single target, it's an AoE one here as well. Single target. So like we said, the biggest sim here, number one being Pandemic Invocation with Soul Swap and then Haunted Soul. Uh, the ID one is, I don't think it's even on here. I don't know if I even put it on here in the first place. I did, yeah, ID sits down here. Um, this is the only inevitable demise sim. It's not good. It, it, the damage is undertuned. If you want inevitable demise for a progression based setting where you want that drain life value where you want that self healing whatever or if you can there might be certain spots where possibly potentially if it's a council based fight you can cast soul rot and then fork a huge inevitable demise on you know four or five targets for that that huge drain life damage amp that could be relevant like primal council but that's sort of niche and to be determined but so it looks like off the bat uh, number one here, Pandemic Invocation, Soul Swamp, Haunted Soul, being this build right here, this build, basically, playing Dark Lair, all this, is sitting at 103,481 DPS using my gear. The second closest build is Tormented Crescendo, where they're all playing Crescendo here, basically. Uh, this build is as well. But you're playing Soul Rot, and you're playing Malevolent Visionary. So this is your highest summon build right here, P-I-S-S-H-S, -S -S, uh, Piss H-S. Remember, remember Piss. There you go. Uh, <laughs> Tormented Crescendo, Soul Rot, and Malevolent Visionary being this build right here is sitting 173 DPS behind what is considered the highest single target build. Now, if you're going to ask me what build I want to play, I want to play this build right here because Bahana Soul is fine and you know, all that stuff. If you want the pure highest single target sim, it's probably PS Haunted Soul stuff, right? PI stuff, whatever. But if you break down both builds here, so let's open up the Pandemic Invocation sim, right? Look at the actual burst this sim brings. Pandemic Invocation, uh, Soul Swap, Haunted Soul build, basically being Haunted Soul, right? It burst about 181k, 184k at the very, very peak here, roughly. Look what Grim Reach burst to, or sorry, look what Malevolent Visionary burst to right here with Soul Rot. What's it called? TC Soul Rot MV. This burst to a solid 207k, 210k, roughly 30k DPS higher in burst. And this also adds more value every two minutes to our infusion, if you're getting it. Because unlike Demonology that has a minute and a half cooldown most likely now, and Destro with three minutes, Affliction has a very strong damage profile with PI. All right, I wasn't going to run power infusion sims but i said you know what i have an extra minute why not i'll run some so like we're just looking at these are the current sims without power infusion keep in mind uh where's my game at here once again uh so it is still current sims highest sim build uh looking like this right There's so much confusion with this i can't wait to be have actual regular sims not this over and over the highest sim build is currently this right here pandemic invocation soul swap haunted soul playing it for a while Factory and power infusion for every single dark layer. I didn't play with timings to an actual like millisecond, but I think this is pretty solid. Torment Crescendo, Soul Rot, Malevolent Visionary overtakes this build by a good bit. Both Soul Rot builds overtake this build by about a thousand DPS roughly. And like I said, it's because you got that big Torment Crescendo or the, you get that big Malevolent Visionary uh, Soul Rot value. Crescendo adds some value too, right? But that big two minute dark layer Malevolent Visionary damage profile brings you the extra soul rot cleave extra rapture damage uh more soul rot dot damage malevolent visionary empowerment from dark lair with soul rot and getting power infusion this build does indeed overtake the haunted soul build so we'll see where it goes both soul rot builds actually overtake this here the no crescendo soul rot build does as well which is basically just playing haunted soul like this both builds end up overtaking uh overtaking the normal baseline generic haunted soul build power infusion 
start up in a minute, lines up well every two minutes with PI, adds a lot of value to AF. So like I said, AF's really flexible, super customizable. Whatever you want to do, AF can basically do. If you're playing big Grim Reach build, once again, AF's not even that far behind. You've got full on Grim Reach being about a thousand DPS behind the top tier best single target build without power infusion. You factor in power infusion, it's behind by 1.5k, but you've got that huge AB profile in Grim Reach every two minutes. If you want to play Solrot builds, you can do that. If you want to play a bit more burstier build with Malevolent Visionary and Solrot, you can do that. That's very customizable. It's gotten a lot of solid just talent nodes along the way that just make it single target good regardless. Almost whatever you played on here. Basically, this row is mandatory, but that's just sort of life how it is. And I will say playing Dread Touch at an eight second duration from six is like playing a different spec. It feels a lot better. Uh, for those that are wondering, I did indeed add in an uh, AOE sim here as well. Uh, the highest sim in AOE, uh, I, I made it eight targets, 40 seconds. Highest sim is Grim Reach, no crescendo. I believe it's something like this, I think. Uh, I didn't look exactly. So, so something like this. Yeah, something like this. Basically, you're playing Haunt, Dread Touch, Row, Soul Rot for a bit more damage to single target again, and Grim Reach once again. Pretty much jumping from being jumping from being about a thousand dps behind the main single target build to being ahead substantially in aoe over the no soul rot build here as well so death is flexible it's got big aoe with cooldowns with grim reach and all that and honestly it's still pretty good in single target if you had told me this is how how it's a destro i think af if you told me this is how af would look heading into patch 10.0.7 i would have said you were crazy but af looks strong it's customizable it's got reach it's got different talent builds it can do a fair bit of things. And while we are still in patch 10.0, essentially 10.0.7 for the next few months, I'd assume till 10.1 hits, 10.1 PTR is currently out. Tier should be out soon-ish. And uh, a lot of bosses in Aberyst look to be single target based and AF looking to be one of the best single target specs in the game. So we'll see where it goes. So thanks for watching guys. That should just about wrap it up. Um, like I said, AF looking good. In 0.7 i'm excited for it i'm pumped to play it in vault incarnates even on farm probably play it a little bit mythic plus see where it goes damage wise and all that uh, i'm more pumped for 10.1 ptr testing which is actually coming essentially ptr ray testing begins in about 20 hours which is actually crazy uh and we'll be able to play this version of af i guess in relevant settings on ptr before it hits retail because 10.07 is coming in a week and 10.1's testing is in a day. Uh, so we'll see where it goes. I'll have that footage up here as well, hopefully, uh, after testing is included and all that, but I'm pumped for it. AF looks good. AF looks customizable. Uh, you can tailor it to a lot of things. And honestly, Destro is still good. Demo's looking pretty solid as well. We'll have to see where they all go. I want to see how the fights are structured and Aberus and things. But even in 0.7, uh, Warlock is gaining some value. And I think, once again, all these changes lay a good <laughs> a good foundation i don't want to laugh too much here for hopefully some changes in 10.1 so uh we will see but as always thanks for watching guys if you have any comments put them down below in the comment section i'll be sure to get back to you same with any questions uh any weekly warriors add-ons or profiles in the video links to twitch and discord down below as always for free uh, i'll have the sims down below in the description or somewhere as well if you guys are interested in that and as always i want to give a huge shout out to my patrons for in the video guys thank you a million times for also support on patreon really appreciate it uh, if you're looking at supporting on Patreon, there should be a link up here as well as down below in the video description. So the next few weeks, the next few months are going to be pretty wild. I wasn't expecting ray testing this fast. PTR is, you know, I, I'm pretty sure 10 point one's hitting at some point in early May. They're pushing a lot of ray testing really quickly. Dungeons are opening in a matter of 16 hours for testing. And then we have ray testing in 20 hours. It's going to be a wild ride. And we also have 0.7 PTR or, or Points of a patch hitting retail in you know, a few days. So I will indeed have guides going up most likely on AF, Demo, and Destro for point seven stuff on YouTube here as well. The website will be updated, all that stuff, yada, yada, yada. Um, so yeah, be on the lookout for those. That being said, thanks for watching, guys. I'm going to catch you all again soon on stream. Peace.